from Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likey Show. Who is this Tom guy? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likes. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likes Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOPS. 1-800-5-800-8. Six, six. Look at this story from the Arizona Republic. Jennifer Aniston, remember her? <laughs> I remember Jennifer Aniston. She was the one of the friends. In my day in the golden age of television, that that was comedy by gum. Wonder what ever happened to that Jennifer Aniston. Way back in the 90s, I remember women wanted to wear their hair like Jennifer Aniston. Remember those days? When she'd change her hairstyle and... Every woman went to the down to the supercut and said, I want to look like Jen. That was years and years ago, partner. Years ago. Yes, according to the story of the Arizona Republic, the uh <laughs> the uh website Bang Showbiz says Jennifer Aniston has been celibate. For six months. I wonder if she volunteered for that or if the rest of the male populace imposed it on her. Oh, boy. Says here, the former friend star is currently believed to be dating her traveling co-star, Erin Eckhart. But is reportedly abstaining from sex until she finds, quote, true love. This in the Arizona Republic. It says here in the Arizona Republic, a source told Britain's Closer magazine. Is that Closer or Closer? I think Closer would be my magazine if I published one on Closer. It would probably be the one in Britain that writes about gossip. The source said Jen's made it clear to men who want to date her. She's not interested in one-night stands or flings. Ooh. She's looking for true love. And she's saving herself. The source said, she told me, I'm looking for the person who will love me for who I am, not what I am. I am not interested in sex for the sake of it. Ugh. Hmm. Says here, Aniston's five-year marriage to Brad Pitt ended in divorce in 2005. It's because he got Angelina Jolie. Who wouldn't make that trade? I would not go to Africa, though, and start adopting kids with her. That's where I draw the line. Hit it and quit it. says here that Aniston has since enjoyed relationships with Vince Vaughn and British model Paul Sculter and has also been romantically linked to Sex of the City star Jason Lewis. It says here that Aniston has also allegedly had her eggs frozen as she seeks Mr. Wright. <laughs> Now, this story leaves open so many questions. 
and so many potential topics. I'm going to choose to go in the following direction here. Somebody who's gotten boffed by others. Let's just say more than one other. We're not going to speculate on the number of men that Jennifer Aniston might have been with or not been with. Because she's probably got even more expensive attorneys than I've got. And even if I guessed right, I'd probably have to pay her something, so I'm not going to try to guess. But um, uh, if I am with someone who has had sex with more than one person, and then they tell me that they're shutting me down because they're waiting for true love, they're out. No one is going to tell me sex is going to happen when I'm ready, when I say so. I mean, that's perfectly fine. I don't believe in rape. But if you're not ready for sex, I'm not ready to date you. If you're not ready for sex, I'm not ready to spend time with you. I'm not ready to go out and have dinner with you or walk red carpets with you. I'm not ready to go on vacation with you or be photographed with you. I'm just not. If I can't get sex from you, I'm not interested. You know, this reminds me of those stories we used to read about women who say they are born-again virgins. You know, the women who've slept with everybody until you. Now they read the rules, or they read uh, The Secret, or they read some book. So now they're going to turn over a new leaf. Now they've met you. Even though they've had sex with everybody in town, the buck stops with you. These are the women on online dating services. Their headline says, Friends First, or I've Had My Fun. Ladies, when you write an online profile, think of the ramifications of saying, I've had my fun. I've had my fun means now that I'm going to meet you, we're not going to have any fun at all. <laughs> I'll be damned if I'm going to go out with you when you've already had your fun and now you're done having fun. I've had fun in the past and I'm going to have fun in the future. If you like to have fun, I'm in. If you're done having fun, start freezing your eggs, lady, because it's going to be a cold day in hell before you meet Mr. Wright. I don't care if you were Jennifer Aniston back in the 90s. I couldn't care less. If you're now freezing your eggs and you have a turkey neck, you better at least let me get a look at the merchandise. Or I'm out. There'll be no true love. Uh, my response would be that if if what this story says is true, and it's all rumor and speculation, but if what the story said is true, I would say no wonder she's not married yet. No wonder she can't find anybody. What self-respecting man would be with a woman who says, uh, I'm not just having sex for the sake of sex anymore. I'm done with that. Now I'm looking for true love. I'd rather have known you back then. I don't want to know you now. Now in the era when I have to, like, you know, change diapers with you and go to Lamaze classes with you. So you had all your fun with Brad Pitt and everybody else, but now that you've met me, now you're saving yourself. And imagine as a guy, too, you meet Jennifer Aniston, and she's been with Brad Pitt. Now she tells you, even though I was married to and had sex with Brad Pitt, I am not having sex with you. <laughs> it's like, why even try? This is a 40-something former sitcom star. You know what I'm saying? It's time for the Petri dish. It's time for the turkey baster. I know some women probably think I'm being rather rude or cruel. It's probably because it, the same thing applies to those women. 
They probably are the same. The eggs are starting to dry up. The menopausal mustache is getting ready to kill you. Know that little that little fuzzy thing above the upper lip there. Women don't want to be thought of as disposable or having an expiration date. In my view, Jennifer Aniston has passed it. If you were dating a woman, would you tolerate being told, we'll date, but I'm not having sex with you? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I took your advice staunchly, and I've been dating lots of different girls and banging all kinds of chicks. If you only knew, more ass than a toilet seat. Love that. Oh, jeez. It's the Tom Likas Show. Show at 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Yes, according to a story that appeared in the Arizona Republic newspaper, Jennifer Aniston has been selling it for six months. And, um... Although she is supposedly dating her co-star in traveling, Aaron Eckhart. She is reportedly, it says here, abstaining from sex until she finds, quote, true love. Who would tolerate that? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Taylor on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First time, long time. Thank you. You know, I... I, I turned on your show and I heard it, this story you're talking about today. It just reminded me of a, a, an experience I've had and it just blows my mind what, you know, obviously the effect that this type of mentality has on, on, on guys and on people in general. And I dated a girl in college, a little Bible banger, didn't want to give it up. Finally, after about a year, I got her to, and I'll tell you, she did, did definitely become quite a freak in, during that time when we were uh, engaging in sex. But, uh, after we broke up, uh, she ended up kind of wanting to be one of those born again and, and, and not obviously uh, engage in any activity of that sort at all. I mean, nothing other than kissing. And uh, guess how many years she went uh, after that with having a long-term boyfriend? Uh, probably all those years. I'll tell you this, that we broke up in about seven years ago, and it's been seven years. Yeah, um, and there she you go. had a serious boyfriend. Now, uh, I'll tell you, the interesting twist on this um, is that She's now engaged, and uh, interestingly, she's been in a long-term uh, relationship with a guy that she's only been together with four months. Huh. Now, I wonder what would inspire that guy to want to get engaged after that short period of time. Well, he either is getting really good sex, or he figures the only way he's going to get sex with her is to marry her. That's exactly it, and that's my point is, you know, she went seven years without getting a serious boyfriend. I wonder why that is. I don't think she has social issues, and now she's with a guy that's engaged with her after four months of a long-distance relationship. Just goes to show, uh, you know, the power that that has on uh, the, the psyche and yeah. obviously in, in people's judgment. Have you ever read these profiles on uh, the, uh, the the websites like Match.com or Yahoo Personals or, uh, oh, you know? Yeah. I mean, oh, it's a joke. Yeah, you got these women there who say uh, things like, uh, tired of playing games, no more head games, no more liars, no more jerks. It's like, come on, can't you slide one in under the wire? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're, 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 trying to, exactly, they're trying to pretend to be something they're not. Now that I've had sex with everybody in the phone book, I'm drawing the line at you. Yeah, yeah. I think I think those women have been struggling their whole lives, uh, you know, and trying to find a man to lock down. I have and, a lot. Uh, by the way, I have a lot more respect for a virgin, virgin, than one of these women who says, "Nah, I'm tired of being used. I'm tired of just having sex for the sake of having sex." You know what? I. uh I take that as an insult. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Well, uh, love your show, Tom. Thanks so much. If you could take me out, uh, Lacey Peters and Saul with a thank you, Jesus, I'd greatly appreciate it. I certainly can. Amber. Hey. Amber. Amber, Mitchell, Thank you, Jesus. 
It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Christine on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, she was a tough talker off the air with Dean. Oh, she was going to put me in my place. Coward. And I know she's listening to Coward. <laughs> Hanging up at the last minute. <laughs> Yep, they can't handle it. Once they get to the real deal here, once they get to me, the fixer, the problem solver, the final authority, they hang up just like that. <sighs> Click. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Matt on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Doing great. Man, anybody in my bullpen said, hey, you know, Matt, I'm going to abstain. Yeah, they got to step. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? If you want to abstain, start with the next guy. Yeah. Because me, no. <laughs> for one day, a week, a month, a year, no. After I make you regret this for the rest of your life, then tell these guys <laughs> you're abstaining. Yes. Well, Tom, can you take me out old school? Old, I, old. Oh, old, old school. Yes, I can. It's Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, first time, long time. How are you? Doing great, Mike. Good. Hey, listen, I work with a girl who posts on these websites, kind of girl who, uh, you know, doesn't doesn't give it up, always complaining why she can't keep a boyfriend. I listen to her in her office, always talking about, uh, you know, hey, I'm not giving it up till he buys me that bracelet. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. Then she wonders why she can't keep a boyfriend. <laughs> You know, I'm I'm one cubicle over. I'm like, I just sit there and laugh. I sit there and laugh. She's a total prima donna. You know, she's she's pretty decent looking. You know, got the nice rack going, but she can't keep a boyfriend for anything. I'm like, well, what's you know, what's up? Why don't you give it up? Oh no, not till I get the diamond bracelet. Not till I get this. Not till I get that. And I'm like, you're kidding me. You know, it's a joke. Unbelievable. Yeah, you know, hey, I love your show, Tom. I'm I'm married, actually. Uh, I've been a long-time listener. I'm married. I'm happy. You know, I've got, got a couple kids. Things are great. I wish I would have known about you 15 years ago when I was in the club scene, when I was running around looking for tail. I was just, oh, man, I could have had so much fun, but I just didn't know the game. I didn't have the game. But, you know, went ahead, got married, got the kids. I'm happy, you know, doing well. And I listen to these chicks, especially this girl, you know, listen to her complain, complain, complain. I can't keep a boyfriend. We're always breaking up. She doesn't give it up for anything. But, hey, Tom, can you take me out Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Carlos on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. Hey, um, a while back I met this girl and um, we started dating. And uh, like for a whole year I kept trying to, to get her. And she would tell me that she, was, she, she wasn't she ready or she was a virgin or she was religious, this and that. But then so a year passed and then she finally gave it up. And then after a little after a little while, we went our separate ways, and I found out that this guy knew also dated her, and she was like giving it up to all kinds of guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? And That's why I time, tell guys I, not to wait. If a woman tells you that, it's time to go. Well, now I know. Now I'm, I don't put up with that. If she don't give it up, I'm out. You know. Glad to hear it. 
All right, Tom. Carlos, thank you. Tim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, this is Tim from uh, Oxnard. I'm on my way back home from L.A. Uh, I just just want to go ahead and touch on the Jennifer Aniston subject. Yeah. Yeah, well, anyways, I knew this girl back in college uh, a couple years ago, right? Um, she was going out with a buddy of mine. And, uh, you know, she didn't. I guess she was uh, in this long-term relationship before that, and she didn't want to do anything, stuff like that, right? And it turns out that she was, I guess, like the the, the school slut in in high school. Like everybody, everybody got a turn. Basically, she was like a doorknob. And um, I guess she ended up going out with, with my boy. And didn't give him nothing, absolutely nothing. And uh, I guess got her wanted to get engaged with her. Got engaged, and I guess now they're married. But uh, I guess he had to wait. I don't know how long just to get some. And she was uh, basically the school slut, and I just that's basically the same same same. I scenario, would you know? never ever tolerate that. Yeah, why? Why? Doesn't make no sense. I've been a long long time listener, first time caller. I'm uh, very very excited to to get on and uh, speak with the man. Just like the other guy said, I wish I would have heard about you when uh, actually I didn't have a dad. So basically, you're like my you're like my father. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you're the man, Tom. You're the man. Well, thank you very much for that, Tim. I appreciate the call. It's one eight hundred Tom five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Oh look, Christine decided to give it another go. Christine, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. <laughs> I am definitely not a coward. Actually, I tried to get a hold of you last night because actually your talk show last night got me all riled up. But we're not talking about that on this show. Right, but it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. You're teaching all these young guys how to treat women. And That's right. What's the best way to treat women? Yes. Oh, my God. And, you know, I have a 16-year-old. I am scared to death for her. I am scared to death that you are creating this generation of idiots. Idiots? And she's going to grow up in it. I think these guys are pretty smart. Oh, it's not. It's not smart. It well, is completely not smart. They're going to figure out how to get her to give it up. You are amusing at best. You know what? Like when I flip through my channel. Well, keep in mind, dear, you're not the target demographic. The target demographic is young men. Right. But it's scary that what you're teaching them, they, they might be applying to all the young women. I hope they are. <laughs> uh, and you have no, like... No conscious. Do you, 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 know, you, you know what makes it easier for you to do this is that you don't have a daughter. You don't have. No, I, I have somebody else's daughter from time to time. You have somebody else, and you don't worry about her bumping into one of these guys that you're metamorphosizing into. I mean, it's just, they're ridiculous. No, I'm not the least bit worried about it. Are you kidding? I'm happy to share. You're happy to share. Oh yes. Uh, you know, as far as as far as. Treating women like they are disposable and that they... Well, they are disposable. No, human beings yeah, are they not are. disposable. Oh, yeah, they are. They are not... Dis How could you say a human being is disposable? Well, I don't mean literally in a dumpster, but I do mean that, uh, you know, once uh, somebody has served their purpose, it's time to move on. So you're... Yeah, yeah, I know. Your whole attitude about it's okay to use people. Use well, it's done all the time in corporate America, for example. Uh, uh, you know, uh, big companies uh, will use you for years to make big profits, and then one day when they have to tighten their belts during a recession, they put an ax on your back. That's how it works. Uh, have you been used? Yes, you got something out of the deal, too, though. And same thing with dating. Uh, you know, as uh, long as... Uh, dating is not the same as corporate America, only because sure it is. there's a lot more emotions involved. There's people fall in and out of love. People mm. don't fall in and love out of love with corporate America. Well, I give everybody fair warning of what kind of guy I am, but because women are stupid enough to think uh, that they're going to change us, uh, they will give me a chance to, to change. Nobody wants to change you, Tom. Oh, yeah. You're fine. Yeah, you're, I mean, you know what? You're not Women want to change me. Women want to change me. You know what? I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about all the young men that you're brainwashing right now. I'm not brainwashing them. I'm just giving them the information they need. Oh, my God. It makes me like... It makes me sick to my stomach the way they worship you. 
It's ridiculous. It's like you're some sort of god or something, and you've got your own little Bible going on. Just remember, your daughter is going to be the trophy wife for one of the 25-year-olds out there who right now is studying for his doctorate or studying to become an attorney. She'll be his trophy wife. Hopefully she won't end up with anybody that has ever heard any bit of information come out of your mouth. Well, chances are she will. And when she does, uh, you know, she's going to like it, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Because you teach these guys to have respect for the women. Oh, no. Women, women. Don't, women don't go for guys who have respect for them. Women go for guys who treat them like crap. Oh, really? Yes. So Just like your ex-husband. Wasn't he a jerk? I have never been married. Uh, the guy, uh, the father of your child. What a moron, right? What an a-hole. I, w I would never call the father of my child an a-hole. What a -hole do you really or... think of him? He he's he needs help, but he's, he needs I mean, help. You know and I that's the kind of man him. you're attracted to, and that's my point. You see, uh, you couldn't have a baby with like a really nice guy or a really we normal were guy. Kids! Oh my God, we were stupid. Both of us were kids. Well, whatever. And, and and I never married him, and he went his way, and I went How old way. were you when you got knocked up? I was 20. 20. So the idea is to get women when they're about 20, and they're like you were back then, and to be a complete jerk or a moron or an a-hole. And okay. then we get what we want, just like the father of your daughter got what he wanted. He, oh, Right, and he is living the life right now. Let me tell you, he is just the most happiest guy in the world for being a jerk, for being a moron, for being mean to me, for being for throwing me away, whatever. Yeah, he's just living. It and up and now. look, you're the one who said, "Hey, let's let's have a baby." No, I didn't. <laughs> well, how did you get pregnant? It just happened. No, no, it didn't just happen. What kind of birth control were you using when it just happened? We were using condoms. Uh -huh. And you were not using any birth control, meaning you wanted to have a baby. No, I, I cannot tell you that I wanted to have a baby. If you didn't I... want to have a baby, you would have gone and gotten birth control. For, for, for medical reasons, I cannot be on birth control. There's 11 different forms of birth control. If there's one that does not meet your needs, there are 10 others. Yeah, well, six. 17 years ago, there wasn't that many kinds. Uh, they were, but what, there were eight or nine at least. And I was young, and I'm not, I'm not saying that I was You were an adult. Time. But you know what? You know what? Her father, pretty soon he did get married, and then he got divorced, and then he got married again. Well, and that, he he's, clearly, that he's clearly wrong to be getting married. He should just be <laughs> banging as many sad sacks as he possibly can. And then he had three more. Girls. There's more women like you uh, out there somewhere, and uh, he should be having them. Oh, God. You know, I, and I don't even want to go off on your whole spill on single mothers. That is just so ridiculous. What's ridiculous about it? Uh, you're, you're basically saying that women want to be treated like trash. Uh, it's not that they want to be treated like trash. It's that for whatever reason, that's who women are attracted to, and that's who they end up having sex with. Just like the guy who impregnated you. Right. And I was young. I was Perfect. Years old. That's when we want to get your hands on you, when you're young and hot. Okay, well, you We know don't what? want you now. We want you then. 20s. I was young and hot in my 20s. I'm young and hot right now. No, you're I'm not. 36. Darling, you're past your prime now. You're, you're I passed my prime. Yes, you're past your expiration date. <laughs> I have never. And you had a kid. I, yes, I did, and she's absolutely... And you've got stretch amazing, marks, you've got a couple of blue veins that weren't there before, probably the remnants of hemorrhoids. You've got something going on there that you didn't have before. You know what? I was a size six. Oh, but back then. Way back in the old days. And uh, back did you in the old days, right after I had her. Did you have a C-section? No, I didn't. Okay. But you've got some stretch marks and stuff, right? I have absolutely not one stretch mark well, ever. Well, you bring that down here. I'll weight. be the judge of that. I didn't gain any weight when I had her. You I didn't was... gain any weight when you had her? No. I, I, I was that doesn't not... sound very healthy to me. It was, you know, honestly, it was a very unhealthy pregnancy. It was very sick. I did it all by myself, but I didn't gain very much weight. Right. But well... I had her. And I'm glad I had her. Yes. She changed my life. But you, you chose to have sex with a guy you feel that way about. And that's my point. Uh, the guys need to be like the guy who impregnated you. 
They need to be immature, need, irresponsible jerks. Right. They because that's what women go for. As many young women as possible. Not to impregnate them, just to have sex with them. <laughs> just to have sex. Because look at you. You did it. As far as getting... Didn't pregnant, you? You know what? It happens. I don't regret it. You did it. But you had I, sex with a guy you've described as immature and irresponsible. At the time, I was just as immature and just as... Perfect! That's exactly what we're looking for. 20-year-old girls who are immature, irresponsible, and attracted to jerks. Right, so we can have more single mommies in the world. No, no, I have no interest in having babies with anybody, and I use condoms. But I also only have sex with women who use birth control. You know what? It also diminishes a woman's... Um, Self-esteem? I hope so. It diminishes their self-esteem. That's perfect. We need your self-esteem to be as low as possible. Oh, my God. And I can't, I, <laughs> I can't believe it. it the like, lower your I self-esteem is, the more likely it is you're going to have sex even with me. Wow. And then I get to do something to you, you'll regret the rest of your life. You know, I, I have had, I don't know, maybe because I have been a single mother, but I have had plenty of opportunities to be attached to a sugar daddy or somebody that would spend lots of money on me. All what does that prove? You know what? The thought of an old, ugly, stinky, bald-headed, beer-bellied, disgusting old man on me is not worth a million dollars. Well. <laughs> no. Fine. So uh, you enjoy your little apartment there with your daughter. Oh, I found me a man. I, I actually waited out. I had my standards extremely high. Yes. And I waited out for... So he's a multimillionaire? No. No, he's not a multimillionaire. What does he do for a living? He works in the expo business. In the what? Uh, he does that. Uh, he builds things for expos. So he's in the construction business? Yes, he's a project manager. He just makes enough to get by. But you know he what? just I makes enough ask. to get by. Well, see, you were trying to impress us. Uh, with how desirable you are, but the best you could do is some guy who, who uh, it, it does little projects. You know, I told you, I could have had multi-million Who just dollars. barely gets by. Well, why, you would if you could. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could have, Tom, but I told you. If you could have, you would have. No, the thought of an old, ugly, stinky, beer belly. So all you could get is old, nobody. ugly, stinky billionaires. That's all you could get. No. I mean, if you were not capable of getting a young, hot, dashing millionaire like George Clooney, yeah, that you couldn't get. It's not about money. Oh, Tom. yeah. That's what those who can't get money always say about it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I tried it. I could have had Sugar Daddy. Yes, you could have been a contender, I know. I could have. And you know what? I chose not to because... You chose not to be somebody. a contender. You chose to be with a guy who just barely gets by because that's the way you like it. I do. Sure you do. I absolutely do. And I am proud to show my daughter that money is not an issue. You can show your daughter all you want, but if your daughter's a 9 or a 10 when she turns 18, there's somebody with money who's going to turn her head around and get exactly what he wants from her. Well, I can only pray every night that that doesn't happen. Oh, it will. No. And she'll do the same thing you did. No. She'll hop right in the sack with a jerk. She will not do the same thing I did. How do you know? Because she doesn't like her father. It doesn't, so, it doesn't matter. She doesn't like her father. But, you know, many girls say they don't like their father, and then they end up marrying or dating guys who are exactly like their father. Well, I honestly, there are books on this subject. There are books on this subject. I know that. I understand. Uh, that. All right. So the fact that she doesn't like her father that, that doesn't tell me that she wouldn't date men like that. Jessica, would you date men like your dad? Say really loud. Would you, you can't say that word on the air, even yes, from a no. distance. No, she wouldn't. Yeah, well, she says that now. But we'll see what happens when somebody comes along and knocks her uh, self-esteem down a few pegs, which is easily done. That's what some, one of the things I tell the guys how to do. Well, you know, you're motivating me. I should go get my own show. <laughs> yeah, well, go right ahead. I should counterdict and counteract everything that you're teaching me. I'm not hearing it here. No, you know what I need to do? I need to create a show so I can I can talk to the girls. 
and tell them how to treat this generation that you're giving birth to. Uh, and what credibility do you have? You were knocked up by an a-hole. Well, that's... <laughs> That's my credibility right there. That's your credibility? You were knocked up by an a-hole? You are exhibit A. You prove my point. I tell men to be a-holes. And you call in to argue with me. And who knocked you up but an a-hole? You tell me. You didn't fight him off. He wasn't a rapist. You said, hey, Mr. A-hole, come over here. I'm not using any birth control. You said, hey, here, right here. Tom, you tell guys. Stick it here, Mr. A-hole. Because of how women treated you when you I think I'm ovulating Mr. A-hole come on in (laughs) he was my high school sweetheart there we all the more reason that's right probably an abuser probably a jerk he was actually pretty nice we were just young and stupid was young and stupid that's it. Well, well, and you were young and stupid, and that's exactly what we men are looking for. The young and the stupid. Isn't that a soap opera on CBS? I believe it is. The young and the stupid. <laughs> okay, I ran out of breath. Well, before you go, Christine, let me get Drew in here. Drew, what did you want to say to Christine? Drew, uh, I mean, Tom, this is Drew. I wanted to let her know that I'm a senior vice president of a major corporation, and I can't wait for her daughter to turn legal age so I could take her out and have my way with her. You're going to put her in the Tickler file for 2010? That's right. And I will have all the access because I'm young and I have money and I will have my way with her. And what goes around comes around and one day you're going to have a daughter who's going to be 15, 16 years old and the same... And then she'll have friends and they'll have a pool party. And- Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's... The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood at one 800 800 talk Michael, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. How are you? Long time listener, first time caller. I just want to let um, most of the guys out there know how much of a god you are to me, man. Um, I take all your advice to the fullest. I'm 22 years old. I have no job, no car, and I live with my parents. Because the advice you've given me and the advice I've taken from you, I am got a child by a gorgeous 22-year-old girl. I Her parents own several companies. Barely have to do anything thanks to your advice. I just wanted to um, thank you for all that, man. What, what advice good. exactly did you utilize here? Because I certainly wouldn't recommend you live with your parents. Oh, I understand that. Or I understand not have that. a job I, or well, have a well, baby. Yeah, uh, well, what fine, exactly did you take? She's, she's taking care of everything for me. I just, I mean, everything you tell me, man, I follow 100%. You know, I did good. Why'd um, you have a baby? Yeah, I do have a two-year-old child. Well, that's... <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. And you have no job? When did I recommend that? Uh, you never recommended that. That's just, I don't need to have a job. They, I mean, She's giving own, you money? Uh, she, her parents own a business where I'm able to come over here and, you know, put in my... Whatever I have to do to help out around here, and basically it paid good for it. How much do they pay you? Mm, I mean, I do. I'm. A, I was originally an electrician until I met her, and then I do like handyman jobs around. You know, little roofing jobs, three thousand dollar jobs here and there. And well, I was asking how much you get paid, and I'm, you get you're filibustering here. Well, there's there's not an actual like pay. You know, I do small jobs for. A small well, at the job. end of the year, how much money do you clear? About eighty thousand last year. Eighty thousand, and you don't even have any specific job. No. Now you're no. putting that money away. What are you doing with it? Oh, well, yeah. Most of it's put away. A lot of it's towards my son's college funds and all that. Great. Stuff. I thought she was doing everything. Well, she is doing everything. Why are you putting to, money like, into the college fund? We go out to eat, get drinks and stuff. She takes care of everything. And I have to do, do nothing. Like I got the the Wonder Girl. The Wonder Girl. Who you knocked up? All right, well, good luck. It's the Tom Likas Show.